In today's show, we're gonna talk about Power Apps model-driven apps. That's right, folks, you've been asking for this for years, so I'm finally going to delve into model-driven apps and we're gonna build the whole thing from end to end. Yes, the video's a little long, but that's necessary because we're gonna do all of it, we're not gonna skip anything, and I'm gonna to try to add all the context as we should go through. Should be fun, but first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna to talk about Power Apps model-driven apps. That's right, we're finally gonna dive into this topic. And why are we finally diving into it? Well, A, you've been begging, but B, more importantly, I finally feel like it's starting to mature, right? Microsoft's been putting this new unified interface on it, and it's it's a lot less clunky these days. So I finally feel like it's it's solid enough to walk you through. Not that they weren't solid before, but the, the building experience has gotten a lot better. Also, you know, remember Microsoft continues this idea of convergence where they want model driven and canvas apps to kind of become the same or, you know, be one interface. And so I think now is the right time for a lot of us to start to get deeper into Dataverse and into model driven apps to understand it. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning, right? We're going to build a solution. We're going to build the Dataverse tables. We're going to have a relationship in that table. Then we're going to customize the forms, the views, the charts and then assemble it all in a model-driven app that we're then going to share. Yeah, we're even gonna talk about the security at the end. So yeah, I know this video is a little bit longer than what you probably wanted, but we're gonna try to teach all the pieces of the puzzle. Also remember, if you know some of the pieces or you wanna jump to a specific piece, look in the description below, and there are links, there are chapters, I think they call them, that let you jump to specific sections if you already know about making tables. Great, skip that part. Um, also along the way, I'm going to try not to make this just a demo that you should follow one for one, but a demo and I'm gonna explain things enough, not in too detail, but enough so that that way you can you know, do this yourself on your own environment instead of just following the demo. Sound fair? And then finally at the end, we'll talk about my favorite YouTuber for Model Driven. That's right, I'm gonna give you another YouTuber to go watch for more Model Driven content. We're gonna talk about a free training class that is available through Power Apps 911, yay! And then also a upcoming live Power Apps uh, Model Driven app class that we're gonna do through Power Apps 911 also, right? So a lot of learning opportunities, but we'll kind of save all that stuff for the end. So because right now what I wanna do is just dig into the details. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so if you haven't seen a model-driven app before, let's just do a quick little demo. So over here is the model-driven app that we're roughly going to build. And so here, you know, one of the things to take in is like, look at all these buttons up here, right? It's for running reports, Excel templates, export, import, emailing links, you know, deleting, new, all of this stuff is just pre-baked in. And this is one of the amazing things about model-driven apps is you get so much for free. If you think about a Canvas app, what it would take to build all that, we could do all that, but it would take us days, weeks, long time to build that. And so then if we click on like Allison's record here, look, we just now have a form, right? And so we could quickly, we could go in here and say, hey, I want to edit it. I change her favorite color to blue, you know, hit save and close and it just works, right? So very form driven is what you're gonna see with model driven apps. Also here could show charts. Like if you wanna see all of the employees, so look, there's two that are in IT, one executive, one accounting. If we click on IT, it filters it in. All of that's pretty much magical and just built in like three minutes. We're gonna build all that. Um, also, if we go over here, um, you know, you can see like if we click on Daniel, so he's in the IT department. If we click on IT department, it loads us over here where we could create or edit the IT department record. And with that, you know, we've got the, the department name. And then also down here at the bottom, we're kind of showing the different people that are in the IT department. So once again, like all these word templates, emailing, all of these things that are built in. You know, is it the prettiest thing? No. Um, you know, can I go and make it a lot prettier? No, right? Canvas apps give us that pixel perfect design. Model driven apps, so gives us, you know, views, forms, um, those charts, you can do a dashboard. It gives us some stuff and then we can just kind of, you know, as long as that stuff works for us, it is so easy to do. So that's what we're gonna spend the rest of the time doing is building a version of this app or, or pretty close to what we got here, right? So the first thing we wanna do, go back over here. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to solutions. So anytime you're building a model driven app, you're always gonna to wanna to use a solution. And that's because they just package up so nicely and some of the functionality only works if it's in a solution. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna do a new solution. We're gonna give it a name, we're gonna call this a video employees. Now we're just call it video. And so then we also, you know, we have to select a publisher. 
This will be more important later. We can learn about solutions on another day in great detail. For right now, just take one of your default publishers and roll with it. Don't overthink the versions and say create. So this is gonna create us a blank empty solution and it should pop up here in just a second. There it is. We'll click on video. And so then now we're in that empty container. So now all the things that we wanna build around this solution, right, about this app, so all the pieces, whether it's the tables or the app itself, if you're gonna do any workflows or any other pieces, even the security model, all of that happens in the solution so that not only do we have it all bundled up nicely here, but we can pick it up and move it to other environments. And because it's all in a little bundle, it just goes, well, happy bundle of joy. All right, let's give this one second to finish one. All right, that's all there, right? And so we didn't find anything. There's nothing in our solution yet. That makes sense. So now what we wanna do is we wanna build our tables, right? So you need to build your Dataverse tables to make model-driven apps work, right? Because model-driven apps only work on top of Dataverse tables. They do not work on top of SharePoint. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click over here on tables and we're gonna do new and then table. Okay, what do we wanna call this? Well, you know me, we're gonna call this employees. Actually, we're going to call it video employees just to make sure there's no confusion. So video employees. And then the primary column here, we're going to change this to title. So we're going to say save. Now, as we create this table, keep in mind that we're going to go quick-ish, and we're also not going to do lots of columns. There's another video up there that if you want to get into more of the details of all the columns and what I created, you know, um, I, I did that as a separate video before. The UI was a little bit different in that one, but the process and the columns and the decisions around what column types you wanna use, that was all explained in more detail over there. Okay, so this drops us into this lovely little interface and now we're just gonna add some columns. So our first, I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all of the ones. So we hit the little plus here, we'll deselect everything and we really just want to see title, right? Dataverse has a lot of built-in columns. We only want to see the ones that we're, we're building right now to avoid confusion. So now we'll do plus. We'll quickly make one called first name. We'll do single line of text, boom, perfect. And then now we'll do the same exact thing, but we'll do it for a last name, right? And we'll leave in all the defaults and just hitting save. That's all we're doing. Now I do want to throw a couple other column types in there. So we'll just do an add here. We'll do um, higher date. And then for higher date here, we're going to change the format from uh, single line of text to date and time. And we're going to do date only. And remember, one of the things we show in that other video is if you really want to do date only and you only want the date, then date only, date only is the way to go. I explained that over there. So we'll say save again. Okay. And then we also want to add another one. We're going to add favorite color. I mean, who doesn't track their employee's favorite color? And then we're going to uh, change this here to make it a choice column. So we'll do a choice. And then for this one, we're not gonna make it a global one. We're gonna just make it a local. So we'll do no. And then we're just gonna manually put this into red, blue, green. And then once again, I have another video that talks about the choices up there. So we'll just keep, keep pointing you that way, right? Because the idea is this video is gonna be long enough as it is. We're trying to cut out things that we've taught before. All right, so first name, last name, hire date, favorite color, easy enough. Um, I mean, you know what that one, we'll add another one. We're going to add two more. Um, one, we're going to add face and we're going to make this one a file and an image. And we're going to set that as the primary image so that that way when you're referencing this record, that image would pull through. So we'll say save there. And then the last thing I want to build is we're going to build a relationship. So we want to have the department, but we want to have a separate table for that. So what we have to do before we can add the department column here, we have to build that other table. So, this table is saved so far. Um, we're just gonna go back here to tables and then we'll just do another new table. And then we're gonna call this one uh, video departments. And primary column, we're just gonna put this as department name. All right, I just try to make these things obvious to us as we go through. You might also notice I keep doing like with spaces, without spaces. I purposely do that so we can kind of see where those surface and how that may or may not affect us. So. If you're building one of these to kind of learn from, having varieties in there helps you be like, oh, well, they don't look the same on this screen. How do I make them look the same on this screen? So you can kind of start to figure out some of the extra knobs to turn. There you go, we'll save this one. And that will get us a departments table. And then we're just gonna quickly add a department manager column to that one. So there you go, it rendered. I would probably do this whole thing again. Whoop, get rid of all those, department name, save and then add one here, and we're just gonna call this uh, department manager. 
Seeing line of text, right? We're not worried about relationships with our relationships. We just want to have a relationship so we can see how that works out. So save. Now, also, what we're going to do real quick is now we're going to fill in some fake P departments, right? Or real departments, I guess. Some executives are real department. And so then we're going to then just give them all um, a manager. And this is another one of those tricks, right? Is having some sample data in there is going to make your life easier as you construct things, work on views and all that. So throw three or four fake records in there and you'll just be happier when you get, uh, you know, when you're, as you work through the UI. So we got three fake records here. Perfect. We'll go back to tables and then now we'll go back to video employees. And now we want to add that other column. And so what we're going to do there is we're just going to hit plus. And then for our display name here, we're going to say department. And then for the data type for this one, we're going to do a lookup, look up right here. And then what table do you want to pull from? Well, this is why I named it video, right? So there's no confusion. Oh, look, I have multiple video employees and departments. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I have done this to myself before? How rude. Let's try this one. Oh, I hit save. I forgot to say that. So I hit save and we scroll over here. We have that. And if we hit the drop down here, accounting executive IT. All right, I think I got that right. Cool. So then now we're going to fill in the blanks. I'm just going to hit edit. I think this is a, the same interface, just gives it more room. And so then now we're going to add a CEO. And then we all know that that is Nicola Young. Her hire date was, it does not matter. We just wanted to, that in there. Her favorite color, blue today. You can't do face in this interface, so it doesn't have controls for doing images or file column types. So we just have to ignore that. We'll have to do that later. And then department, if I click in here, we can say she's an executive. Cool. All right. I'm going to pause while I add a couple more fake records. I'll be right back. Okay. So, you know, I quickly just added some, I didn't worry about the hire dates being different or different years, all that, right? Cause we're not using that data right now. So I just was trying to quickly uh, fake it out. But there you go. We got some employees. They've got some departments. They got some favorite colors. We're in good shape. Okay. So there you go. We've built our two tables. So now the next thing we need to do is we want to, um, you know what? Let's just build a model driven app right now. It's going to be a little weird, but we're just going to jump straight, <laughs> we're going to jump straight to the end. And then we're going to come back in here and kind of refine it. So we'll just click back up here on video or back on, you know, we're just trying it back up here. So we're going to apps. Let's use the left side. There we go. And so then now we want to do a new app. We want to do a model driven app. Okay. So when you build a model driven app, right, we're going to call this video employee model driven, right? Really big name. Why want it? And then we're going to say create. This is going to create us a model driven app, which really all it's going to do is going to drop us in an interface like so, right? I guess this is their version of studio. But what's crazy is we're not going to like build the way that you think. So all we're going to do, you say, it says, Hey, add a page. All right. We'll add a page and then table based view and form. Okay. Next. And then select existing table. And so if we search here for video, we've got um, video departments and then video employee here. Now, do I super wish I had not uh, named them the exact same thing? Yes. So remember made my mistake. It happened, but I'm pretty sure I've got the right two selected. We'll hope. So we'll say add. And look, right now it's done. It's like, hey, here's your app, right? There's video employees. So there's my people. That's right. Here's our video departments all created today. Cool. We picked the right two. Now the app's not super awesome yet, right? Like if we said, Hey, I want to, uh, let's just go ahead and save it. And then we're going to play it here in just a moment. What we're going to see is that yes, the app is done. Technically the app is up and running. So we'll hit play. Um, oh, we got to publish to do that first. But what we're going to find out is that it's a little missing some pieces, right? So how do we add those missing pieces? That's the reason we're doing it in this weird order because I wanted you to see what sometimes people do, right? If you have Dataverse tables, though, you can make an app just like that. But if we drill in here to video employees and we click on CEO, which we know is Nicola, like, look, we don't have any of her fields. We don't have a way to change her face or pick her favorite color, or what department she's associated with. None of that is here because we haven't built it yet, right? You go to show chart, right? There's no charts to show. So yes, we've got a model drone app technically mission over. Yay. But we want to make it a better one. So this is where it gets interesting, right? You're like, all right, so where do I go in here to customize this view? Where do I go in here to modify those forms or create those charts? You don't, 
That's the weird thing, weird, different thing about model-driven apps. With model-driven apps, we're gonna go make all the changes over on the table. The model-driven app just takes what tables you point at and it assembles the pieces that are there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up here on the left and now we're gonna go back to our tables. We're gonna go back into video employees. And so now let's make this thing better, right? And so the first thing, the easiest thing to make better is probably the view, right? Cause when we were over here, the view just showed us, oh, let's go to video employees, just the title and what was created. A, I don't care when it was created and I wanna see more data about the employees, right? So over here at the table level, what you're going to do is you're gonna click on views, right? Data experiences, views. And so then now what you want is you probably want this active video employees, right? There's a lot more to learn about all these different views. We're not worried about that right now. We just wanna get the primary one working. So active video employees and Dataverse keeps up with active or inactive it's kind of its own mechanism. But you can see that that shows us everything, shows us the same thing we saw over there. So we're in the right place. We're going to get rid of created on, right? So remove it. So now we just have title. And so then over here now we can just grab first name and drop it here. We'll grab last name and drop it here. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it. No, I can't sing. Um, and then we're going to grab favorite color. We just drop it in. Higher dates. Now, there you go, right? Look, awesome. So what about department? The whole reason I wanted relationships so you could see a little bit of how that worked. So if we drop department here, we're going to see that there are executives or accounting or IT, but what if I want to see the department manager in this view? Oh, what you're going to do is over here, you can click on related. And then here you've got the department. And so in this case, department video departments. So this shows you all the lookup columns or all the lookup, yeah, columns, the tables. And so then I can see all the columns from that table and look, there's department manager. So now we can drop that in here as well. And we didn't, right? We didn't have to jump through a bunch of crazy hoops. That's it. If we want to change our view name, let's change it from active video employees to um, Power Apps 911 employee, Apps 911 employees, right? And once again, you change these little things to kind of see where they show up on the other side. We could change our sorting. We could do different filtering, you know, that's that's basically what's here though, right? Add some columns, pull in the related columns, sort it, filter it, name it, boom, you're done. So there you go, we're good. We're gonna say publish, and that will get us this view all done. So now we're also gonna jump over to um, the department view, or the department um, list, table, table, and we're going to create a view over there. All right, my publish did take a few seconds to run, um, but just keep in mind, right, you do want to get this published, make sure that the changes are out there so we're going to see them. And what's crazy, though, is like if we go back over to our model-driven app over here and we were to refresh, boom, right? Like we didn't have to go in and change the model-driven app or nothing. We just published the view because it's using that view already. So it's like, yeah, here you go. Awesome. Okay. So there we go. We are in good shape there with that one. So now we'll go back. And then we want to do the same thing quickly for um, departments, right? So video departments, views, and all we're gonna do here for this one, right? Same active video departments. We'll leave this one named active video departments, right? So that way we'd see where that showed up, but we're just gonna get rid of created by here and then we're just gonna pull the department manager in. All right, nothing too big there. There you go, we'll publish that. Also, you can skip the save. You can just hit publish. That does the save and publish. I probably should have done that the first time. Oh, that one happened almost instantly. Perfect, much better. Okay, so now our views are better, right? So over here, we got video departments. Look, notice that's where the name shows up. Active video departments, Power Apps 911 employees. Remember, that's why we change little things so we can kind of see how they surface. But I'm feeling good, right? You feeling good? All right. So now, what's our next challenge, right? Our next challenge is the forms. So when we clicked on Nicola's record here, bleh, not good. Let's go back. So same thing, we're gonna go back into video employees. And so then over here now, under data experiences, we're gonna click on forms. This is gonna bring you to the different forms. And so what you wanna do is you wanna change the main form, right? There's different forms, they have different purposes, not for this today, that's in the live class. If you wanna like learn in super nerdy detail, we're just trying to be enough to you know get ourselves going here. So we're gonna click on that form. And so then now once this loads up, we're gonna get just a cute little form designer. 
It is different than the Canvas app form designer, which is okay. So now that we're in here, right, what it really did was it just made us this one big one column uh, form. So if I wanted, I could click on the form, say, hey, we're gonna make this form a two column, right? So notice that I had the whole section set, uh, the whole tab chosen here, but by clicking here on the form over on the right, now you can see I'm in a different area. We're gonna change this to two columns. And then now that we're into the two column, now I can just go over here and be like, all right, well, I wanna put um, their first name in there. And then now there's last name. And then how about their favorite color? Uh, we'll go over here. We could also drag these in. So if I wanna drag, make sure higher date goes right here. That's great. Um, we've got department that needs drug in right there. Oh, I missed, it happens. Oh, there's department, it just took a second to update. And then the last piece here, right, is face. So we'll throw face over on this side. And so now we've kind of got our form. Now you'll notice that the owner is right here and that is preset to me. Um, so the owner is a required field. Now I could just say, you know what, but we can't change it. Owner is just built in, right? So I could either go here and just set it to locked and read only. So that way they didn't mess with it. Or what you, we often will do is grab it and we'll throw the owner, right? So I'm gonna, I, I should do it slower. Click on owner and now I'm holding my mouse key. I'm gonna drag it up here and I can drop it up here in the header. All right, it has to be here somewhere. You can't just get rid of it. But by putting it up there, it automatically becomes editable or uneditable. But then now the owner of the record is kind of up in the top, right? It's, it's a nice little place to kind of dump it in there. But there you go. Um, you know, if I wanted to, then, you know, like, for example, notice here that this is called the general tab. So I can click in here, um, right? So that's the label. So once again, changing things just to see it. Uh, let's see. We'll call this employee info. Um, and also it says, hey, it has a required name field. Technically, it'll let you leave it blank. Um, I just kind of put something in there. Okay, I hate the, I hate the red, um, but you didn't have to. But there you go. We now have a form. So what we're going to do is we're going to publish this one. And look at that. After a quick refresh, boom, we've got our form over here for Nicola. And so now we can add her face, right? So we'll click choose file. And we'll use this picture of her with a balloon hat that she really hates I use. And then we can just say save and close and it works the way you expect, right? If we jump over here to like Allison, same type of thing, choose file, there's Allison. Cool, all right. Now also same thing if we wanna do a new, there's a new button up here. Once again, we didn't code any of this, the buttons were all just here. And so we could walk through creating a new employee. Notice like with a face, uh, those image columns, you can't do those in the original creation. You have to save those after the fact. But or interacting, editing, adding, you know, deleting employees, all of that's done and all working, right? Uh, same type of thing, like if we wanna go here to video employees and we wanted to delete uh, Daniel, right, by Daniel, we just select him here and say delete. Now on the department side, we have not done any of that. So let's go quickly customize this form and show you another cool little feature. So we'll go back over here. We are done with this one, so we'll get out of this interface. Same type of thing, we're gonna drill back into our video departments table now. And so then over here, what I wanna do, forms, and then the same main form, make sure you click on the right one, and you'll know you didn't if you get here and it looks weird. But so then we're going to first drag the owner up out of the way, right? Goodbye owner, we need to add department manager, right? We've done all that before. But the other thing that I really enjoy about this is over here on the left, we also have um, components, right? So we're including components, a little different interface. So this is where if you wanted to start designing it, laying it out into multiple uh, columns and that type of stuff, totally could. Um, the interesting one here is the grid. And so there's an editable grid and a subgrid. We're just gonna use a subgrid. The editable grid's pretty new and I still get hung up on how to use it sometimes, quite frankly. But if we drop the subgrid in here, that's why I have Juan, right? Juan would explain to me how to do the editable grid. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say show related records. And then now look, it's like, hey, video employees, department employees, right? That is um, related records. So we're gonna say done. So now there's gonna be this grid down here at the bottom. And with this grid, what we can do is when we choose the IT department, we'll see all the IT people. Choose executive, we'll see executive. So it understands the relationships and it's exposing that back to us. We don't have to build that to get any you know, thoughts around what's going there. Now I might, I knew SG control one six, blah, blah, blah. No one wants that. Just jump over here to the label 
and then just change that to be um, Power Apps 911 employees, right? Apps 911, I can't spell, employees. I, seriously, who was in charge of me learning to spell? It was English teachers in the state of Kentucky. They didn't do a great job, sorry. And there you go. So now that's kind of updated. You know, there's a lot more, I should hit publish instead of save first. There's a lot more though we could do here. You know, there's lots of interfaces, lots of things. Let's click on publish so that runs. Um, you know, about spacing, redesigning, having things span across different columns. All of that is possible. We're not trying to teach all the mechanics of forms, but now you're you're dangerous. You've got the pieces. Now you can start to dig in there. Okay, so that's all published. And then as we know, right, since it's published, we can just refresh the screen. And so not only are we going to see, um, oh, let's click out back in. We do departments. Let's go to executive. There it goes. So look, not only do we see the details about executives and, you know, still editable, of course, but we also see that, look, here are the people that are executives. Um, I think accounting had multiple people, right? So let's go back over here and go to accounting. So then there's Juan and Allison, and we can drill straight to Allison. Like, all of the dots are connected, and we didn't write any of that. Think about doing that in Canvas apps, how much work we would have put in to build those types of interfaces. It's where I kind of get a little excited about this. Okay, but we're good there, so we've done that. Um, one other thing we'll show you on forms, because I meant to the first time. Let's go back to our um, employees real quick. So employees. And so speaking of customizing these a little bit more, so back to main. Remember, make sure you get into the right one or you'll be really lost. Um, so say, for example, we want to make one of these columns. This is make title span the whole thing. So if I click on the title one, right? So over here, like we could change the label. So remember, like we did the whole, you know, some of these have spaces, some have capitalizations. So you could change any of these labels here if you wanted. But I also could take title and change it from one column to two. And so then that's how you'd make it span. Now then I kind of got to rearrange everything a little bit. You know, kind of reflow, and I'd probably do it like that. I don't know. We're not going to reflow the whole thing, but you get the idea, right? Then I would just kind of work my way through designing it uh, the way I want. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's not the pixel perfect craziness of Canvas apps, but there's still a lot of cool stuff you can do. So we'll publish that. And so then we should be good. Okay, one more mechanical thing to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about charts. So we're going to go back over here again. And now we're just going to go, once again, it's all table driven. So within the video employees table, we're going to go over here to the right and we're going to click on charts and we do a new chart. Now I will warn you as this loads, I'm about to pause, but this sometimes the very first time you get in takes forever. And that is hilarious because it happened almost instantly, but it's not unusual for this screen to take like five minutes to load. So if that happens to you, it's okay. All right. The good news is the first time it loads might take longer than you want. After that, it loads pretty snappy. Or today, it loaded instantly, made me look like a liar. Yeah, what do you do? So we'll give it a chart name, we'll call this, um, and then we're gonna go over here, set the legend field, and we're gonna set this one to be a favorite color. And then um, what we're gonna do is we're going to set um, this field right here to be by first name. And so then now what we should get is all, all, all the different people. Oh, I did that wrong. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm glad the preview showed me I did it wrong, right? We actually want to choose favorite color here as well. There you go. So then now we'll be able to see that two people like blue, one person likes green, one person likes red. There's different types up here you can use. There's other things you can do, but this is not Power BI, right? Power BI is the right way if you want to do awesome, amazing uh, charts and stuff. We just want to do simple ones that kind of get you exposed to the charts work in there, right? So now we can save and close this. It says, hey, are you done? We are, we'll say done. And there it is. And now if we jump back over here, go back to video employees and say show chart. And so there you go. Our chart is in, awesome. And even better is look, it already is hooked up. Like if we click on blue, it filters out just the people whose favorite color is blue. If we click on green, does the same thing. We click on green again to de or we click out of it, kind of click nowhere. We're back to whatever. So the charts, kind of like the Canvas app charts, not super robust, but they're better than nothing. And they just showed up over here and they automatically were integrated. Like, like, like wow, right? This is what, what gets me interested in model-driven apps is imagine how to do that in Canvas apps. I know how to do it in Canvas apps, but that would have taken a lot of effort. We just made a chart and it showed up. 
If you have multiple charts, like we don't have multiple charts, but if we did, we could kind of come here and we'd see them in the dropdown. Also notice the trend here, right? I'm not doing a whole lot in the model driven studio. I'm doing almost nothing over there. It's really about designing your forms and your tables. Or sorry, going to your tables and adding your forms, adding your views, adding your charts. Model driven apps just assembles all the pieces. Speaking of that, let's just jump over and look at model driven apps again for one second. So let's go back over there. We'll go here. We'll go back to um, our little map here, apps. After a few seconds, it loads. And then we're just going to go back in here and edit this puppy. Once again, I, you're not going to do a lot in here, but I just wanted you to kind of be familiar with the interface. And so like if you're looking at this, like for example, notice that it says group one over here. Well, what the heck? I don't want to see group one. And so like if we expand over here, you can see that under navigation, there's group one. And we could change this to be my views. I don't know, or my tables, or Shane is your favorite person on the planet. Whatever makes sense for you there. But you can put, you know, so there are a few customizations you make here. But like if I wanted to rename video departments, you know, what am I going to do here? Oh, well, look at that. So I can come here and just be like, you know what? I want to get rid of videos. Everybody's tired of hearing about videos. They just want it to say departments. So then we can just do that. And then we'll click over here on video employees. Same type of thing. So then this is not changing them in the system. It used the system name. So some of the things you change here, some of the things you change over there, just look in both places if you start trying to, to, to change things. You can't figure out where you want to update those type of things, right? Um, you know, the sub area one, it doesn't surface, so why bother renaming it? Um, the other thing you might want to do, so add a page here. So if you wanted to add a another view in, like you add another table, you want to kind of continue to roll out or change your design, then you would absolutely just click on this right here. And then you could, you know, just next and bolt it in. And then that same process we went through earlier would happen. Also, what we're not going to do today, but I wanted to show you real quick. Let's go back out, add a page again. So if we built a dashboard, which we would do over on the model driven side, we're not going to do that either, but that would come from here. Custom, this actually lets us embed Canvas apps in our model driven apps. What? Yes, that's right. With custom, you can build a custom Canvas app that will show up inside this model driven app interface. Not for today. We're not going down that rabbit hole. We should at some point. But I wanted you to know that if you wanted to add a Canvas app, you would just click custom here. Next, go through that interface. I feel good, right? Like we've done all the things. We've got a great model driven app. So now what we need to do is we need to share it with our coworkers, right? So we're gonna have to do two things. We're gonna have to set up a security and then we're gonna share it. So we are just gonna hit publish here on the way by. Hitting publish, even when you don't feel like you have to, sometimes isn't bad. Like we find that sometimes things kind of get out of sorts a little bit. You know, everything that we've demoed, we've not had to publish through. But before I got out of here, I, I just feel better by hitting publish there. The same type of thing, if you look back over here, if you go to all, you can publish all customizations and that would publish all your resources everywhere. So if things aren't looking the way that you expect off your changes, don't be afraid to press that button and see if that kind of gets things sink, sunk back up the way you want. Okay. But now what we need to do is I need to share this thing. Now, before I share it, I need to set up security. We can do security in the, the solution as well. So we're just going to go to new, we're going to go to security and security role. This is going to let us build one. So we're going to call this video, video employee um, users, all right, just a role, right? We're just giving a name. And then all we have to do is we can go in here and say, all right, for this particular one, what I want to do is I want to put a go to custom entities and we need to find our tables. And so we know that it's, I think it's this one. I really wish I had named them the same and this one. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the name a bunch of times. This is setting all of these to green. And so if you go up here and look, you would see that what we did was we gave everyone that is in those, we gave that role, think of roles like group. We gave that group permissions to create for the entire organization, read, write, delete, append, append to, assign, share. So we basically gave them full control. This video is not about all the intricacies of the model driven apps, data versus security model, which is profound. That would take like an eight hour video. This video is long enough as it is. So right now we're just trying to get people using it. So we're just going to completely share everything, but I encourage you to learn more about this at a later point. So we're going to say save and close. 
So that creates our security role. So anyone we put in that role will have access to the new tables that we just created. Great. And so then the last thing we need to do is we need to now share the app. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to apps. We're gonna hit the ellipses here and we're gonna say share. The security interface looks similar to what we're used to. You can kind of see these are the people that, these are all environment admins in my world. So they already have access. And so I'm gonna go up here and say, hey app, what I want to do is I want to give you, I want to uh, make sure that dun, 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 dun. Uh, we're going to give basic user access and we are also then going to give um, the one we just created, what we call it, we call it like video something. I really wish there was a search in here, but that would make my life too easy. Video employee users. Woo, there it is. Okay, so we're going to add all that. And click out of here and we're going to say share. So that gives the app the security roles that it needs. And so then once that's done, now we're going to say, hey, I want to share this app off with someone. And so we're going to share this app off with uh, Ferguson. There's Ferguson to cat. And so then now we select on Ferguson and then we need to assign Ferguson the standard, the security roles. And so we're going to give Ferguson, the uh, the, cus the video employer users customer, right? So that'll give him access. We're also gonna put him in basic users to make sure that we don't have any other uh, account uh, challenges, right? Once again, we're not trying to teach the whole security model. We're just trying to get this thing working so that you can get interested in it so you can use it more and then learn all the crazy details about how this works. But there you go. And so then now we would share this off with Ferguson. Now. With Canvas apps, Ferguson would have gotten a email. With this particular one, um, Ferguson is not going to get an email or anything like that. So we would need to provide Ferguson with the link to the app. Now, speaking of the link to the app, you know, I have so far had luck with just coming here and giving them this one that we've been using. Um, I've heard that sometimes that doesn't work. And so if you really want like the unified URL, the short URL to it. The only way that I know to find that right now is come back over here and then say, hey, I want to um, edit my app. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do something that is, I did not want to have to show you, but we're going to say switch to classic because if we switch to classic over here, you know, then over in this interface, we go to properties, and then down here, there is the actual URL. The So this is the URL that I would want to share with Ferguson. There's probably a better way to get it. This is the way that I know to get it. And just like close your eyes, don't look at the rest of this classic stuff. Hopefully you don't ever have to come in in this interface. This was the interface that I refused to make a video around. So that's why I waited until this new interface showed up. But now that I've got that URL, now we could give that to Ferguson. So he would paste that in and then it would jump him into our app. And because we set the security, Ferguson would be able to do all the things that Ferguson needed to do. Now, as you continue to learn, you can do more things. You can set different icons over here. You could have little things. Right? There's so much more you can do, but hopefully this is helping you guys understand how to do your first Power Apps model-driven app, right? That, that was my goal, was to get you going, get it so that the app had all the pieces and share it. So to continue your learning journey, there's a few different things I'm gonna offer you. The first is since you're watching this on YouTube, you probably like YouTube videos. So if you go check out my friend, Lisa Crosby, right? She's from way on the other side of the world for me. So she has a little funny accent, but um, Lisa is the queen of model driven apps. She might also be the king. I mean, she is amazing at it. So she's got a bunch of great videos. So I'll put a link to her channel up there. So go subscribe to her channel if you wanna learn more about model driven apps. I'll do more content, but not as much as prolifically as she does. So check her out. Also, if you go over to training.powerapps911.com, we have a free class that teaches Power Apps Canvas apps, Power Apps Model Driven apps, Power App or Power BI. Um, and so all of that is over, only in Power Automate. All of that's over there in the free class. Just go to training.powerapps911.com and take the free class. And so that model driven class is more in depth. It's taught by Juan, who is a constant professional, unlike me and all my craziness. And then last but not least, Juan and I are going to be teaching a live model-driven class um, in November. And so you can sign up for that over at training.powerapps911.com also, right? So Juan and I are gonna teach a five-day live class where you can sign up, take it interactively, and do some awesome things. But that's it for today. 
that was a lot. I apologize the video got to be so long, but I didn't want to like half teach you. I wanted you to really be able to understand how this all worked. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for future videos, leave them below. I always try to read the comments and I respond to as many as I can, but I get thousands and thousands a year, so I don't respond to all of them anymore. I'm sorry. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 911. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.